For anyone fortunate enough to don the green and white, it's a major honor to wear a jersey with a name on the front that connects you with the storied legacy of Michigan State. Every Spartan that has come before you, every Spartan that stands beside you, and every Spartan of the future. But for some, the name on the back of the jersey holds just as much weight. My real name is Ed Edward Metz Barstow III, um, and so I have kind of a, a legacy that, that, that has led me from my, gr my grandfather and then my dad. Um, and so from that, I've been able to kind of, I've had great, great role models and examples of for what, um, kind of how a family man should be and also how, you, any, how I should live. Um, and so that was kind of a big thing for me growing up. For many, carrying the weight of a family name can be a tall task, especially when you're the son of a doctor. But for Trey, that wasn't the case. So growing up, actually, my dad's biggest thing he's always been is don't, um, he never wanted me to, to be what he wanted me to be. So he would never let me come shadow him or even he never hardly ever talk about medicine t to me just because it was his big thing Whereas I'm named after him. He didn't want me to feel the obligation um, to, do, to do what he does. But growing up, I kind of, I'd see him come home late and I'd see him leave very early, but I'd also see him make it the best effort to come to everything that all four of us had. Um, and to be there for whenever we needed him. And so that was kind of a big thing for me just from the hardworking standpoint um, and dedication because I, I was able to see that that's something I wanted to be um, and something I, I felt like I could embody. And it was just kind of, it was an inspiration. I was growing up like, hey, this is really what I want to kind of embody in my future. While Trey had his sights set on following in his father's footsteps, he started his long, unique journey in middle school football. So started football when I was um, in going into seventh grade. I kind of had a long time coming for me just because I was I was a tall kid that was re really skinny. And since I was old, my mom was always kind of nervous about me playing. Um, and so my younger brother started, actually started way before me. So I was always the one who had to go to their games and watch them. Um, and then when I was finally able to play, it was probably the most exciting day of my life just because I'd always watched them play football. Um, and I was finally, finally getting to play. And so it was, a real, it was a great experience. It kind of happened that I started becoming better at football. Um, and my sophomore year, I kind of realized that I actually had some talent um, and that I could possibly, if I did the right things, maybe take, use it and go somewhere with it. And then things happened. I had a bad foot injury my junior year of high school and then kind of didn't know where I was going to end up going, going to my senior year. Um, and then last minute, I decided to go to actually go play football at Georgetown. Um, was kind of set on it and was excited, was excited to see where my life would take me. And then a week before signing day, um, Coach Doozy had, had asked me to come up on an official and then kind of things started rolling from there. It was kind of a last minute decision and was a hard one for sure just because I didn't know really what was happening um, coming in as preferred walk on, um, but it was, it was amazing. It was different for me because coming, I knew, I knew I could play, like I knew I had ability, um, but like anybody, it's the confidence level that's the biggest thing, is I had to realize like where my confidence level was at and I had to come with kind of the whole Michigan State mantra as a chip on my shoulder. Um, and not like I had a, any problem with anybody, but I had to kind of believe in myself and what I can, what my, my ability was. Um, and so I remember coming in, I was, I was nervous, definitely, just because I didn't know what to expect. Um, as a young kid, you, you see college football is, almost this, this amazing thing and something you dream of. Um, and for, for my situation, D1 Big Ten football was what I dreamed about. And so for me, it was, it was a time where I was like, okay, like this is, I'm really here. So my first few weeks up here, I just tried to kind of put my head down and do everything I could do to, to kind of get better and, and work hard and to prove myself. I told my dad actually, when I was with football, was our big thing in my family was, although football is an amazing thing, is how I'm gonna use it to help me further my life in many different outlets. With that, it saw, I saw a great opportunity to use football to help me get to a great academic place and also a great athletic place. And so coming here was kind of that figuring out how I can juggle both academics and athletics. So com coming to Michigan State, I started off as a human bio major um, and with the, with the course load, I was, I was kind of up and down of what I think would work for me. Um, so I actually moved to kinesiology to start, and I kind of got on a good pace with my classes and getting on, taking a, a little larger load than normal, which got me on a good track where I actually finished up in three years. 
and had enough credits to work towards a dual degree. So I actually then added back a human bio degree, and so now I'll graduate this in December with two degrees um, in human bio and kinesiology. From there, kind of my goal is is to apply for med school and then really be a, to be a surgeon. Um, I think for me, being a surgeon was, has always been my dream. Um, I'm, I'm someone who kind of can't pay attention to something or needs to be active a lot. Um, it needs change, something that's always changing. And so when I was growing up, my main goal was to impact, some, impact people's lives. And then my second was I want to find a job that I'm going to be really, really love. And I've kind of learned that medicine or surgery is really something that I love and something that will keep me active and it's almost like a sport in the sense you have to prepare and stay ready at all times for something that will constantly change and no one's ever the same. So you have to be ready to adapt to a situation and make the best of it. With his academic achievements alone, Trey has put together an impressive resume. But when you consider the fact that he's also playing Division I football, it becomes even more remarkable. It's been hard, um, definitely. It's, it's, I've had to make decisions, um, and there's been a lot of late nights or sleepless nights in the sense that I've been going from the library and straight to a 6 a.m. lift. Or, or a long practice straight to the library and then call in a quick hour, hour nap and then start my next day. Um, and so it was kind of that sacrifice and understanding what I wanted to do because the pa I realized how passionate I was about both things through this experience because I had to give up a lot of stuff in the sense of sleep and, and other, other things that I wanted to do to make sure I was giving my best on the football field and also giving my, my best academically. Spartans get it blocked. Any walk-on that goes through four and a half years here is someone that deserves respect throughout the rest of their life. You know, it's not easy. It's not easy being a scholarship player at a place like this, let alone a walk-on. So, uh, but Trey specifically, he just does so much as far as hard work. I mean, he, he's the most dedicated person that I've ever met to what he wants to do. You know, he's very driven. You know, he wants to be a doctor. He works hard at it. He wants to be a great football player. He works hard at it. He's something that, you know, if, if um, you saw your kids grow up to be someone like Trey, um, you'd be very impressed, you'd be very happy um, at where they were. I mean, the sky's the limit. I really don't see limitations for him because I, I think the way he looks at things, it's always positive. He's always trying to get the most out of himself. He has that sort of charisma about him, just humble and but driven, you know? So um, I know there's gonna be a lot of great things for him in the future. I feel like the future is bright. Um, I have a lot of aspirations. I keep an open mind because I, I have a lot of goals I want to achieve. And it's kind of just understanding that the first thing right now is kind of under, uh, trying to figure out how I'm going to get to med school. Um, not how, but just the whole process of getting to med school because it's a long process through applications and interviews and all different things. And then just keeping an open mind in whatever life brings to just attack it and kind of make the most of it. Um, because through this process, I've learned that Nothing's ever gonna work, work out exactly how you think, but it, if you take it the right way and kind of attack it, it's, it's gonna work out, and it, can be be, and it can be even better than you ever experienced just like this. You know, I've always been a big fan of video games, even in high school. I would always be down in the basement in my room playing video games, um, staying up late. My mom would always have to tell me to go to bed, and <laughs> I would always just fight her every night to try and play. But no, it's just something about video games. Just It allows me to escape, escape reality and uh, just have fun doing it. I get to play with my friends online, talk to them, and socialize like that. So it's a lot of fun. When I was playing Halo back in the day, that's when I really realized like this is awesome and this is where I could do more than just a hobby of mine. Like I could do, maybe I could make this into my career or something. It kind of like opened up more opportunities for me and that's like kind of the process of where I thought, well maybe I should make this into a career, maybe I could make video games. Evan, with his sights set on his future, earned a scholarship offer to play football at Michigan State which brought him to East Lansing and allowed him to further pursue his passion. So my major is media and information with a minor in video game design. So I'm a 3D artist, so I'll make like the characters and the environments and uh, different props and things that go into the video games. And so what we'll do, we'll get together as a team, a couple, two or three programmers and like two or three artists, and we'll work together and create different games. 
This semester, we're just working on a mobile game. That was kind of like what we wanted to stick with. And so that's what we're doing. And it's called uh, Bunny Skate. So you have to control this bunny. It's on ice skates through this uh, maze of different obstacles and stuff that you have to avoid hitting while you collect carrots and try and get to the longest distance. So Bunny Skate, we're just in the process of it right now. And hopefully, well, for sure, it's going to be done at the end of the semester. And we're hoping to release it on the App Store in the uh, Google Play Store. While it might seem like a leisurely activity, Evan's passion for video game design takes up a lot of time and requires endless hours of hard work and dedication, just like his other love, football. It is tough because um, like modeling those props and modeling those different characters and stuff takes a lot of time. Like I'll spend upwards of 40 hours just on one, one prop or one character, and that's, that's definitely time consuming. Especially whenever you get home 7 o'clock at night after practice and you're tired, you don't want to do, do much and you just gotta, you just have to do it. I mean, that's what it comes down to is if you want your work to look good, you really just gotta put the time into it. Just like how I enjoy playing video games, the, like making it and just seeing how far like your models can go from start to finish, it's just that, that process is so rewarding. Just like playing on the fo in football, working your way up over the years and finally getting to start and play more than you have in the past, it's just, it's so rewarding and it pays off. I have uh, one more class to do in the spring, so that's kind of like a, it's a, it's almost like an internship. I'm actually, we're like getting, like we're with our team still, but we're working with a company, directly with a company with like one of their ideas. So that's like a cool way to actually see how the business works and uh, kind of just see how it goes. And then even, and hopefully if, if they like how we work, they could offer us a job. My dream is to work for like a big AAA company like Bungie or EA Sports or something like that. That would be a dream come true. And uh, this process of going to school and making these games with my team members is definitely going to allow me to get there. Whether Evan is working with his teammates in the lab or on the gridiron, his hard work and determination has prepared him fully for his post-Spartan life. Wherever in the world, whether that world is virtual or real, it takes him. The whole process of just being here and growing over the years has definitely made me who I am today, and that's going to definitely transfer to my the rest of my life. Um, the processes of hard work and all the different lessons that we learn over the time is definitely going to allow me to be better in my life. George Blaha, happy to be here with Jason Strayhorn and Keith Nickel and saluting the 28th Michigan State seniors will play their last game at Spartan Stadium today. Some of them now taking a knee in remembrance and in thanksgiving, really, for the opportunity to be part of Mark D'Antonio's program. They could certainly send each other off in grand style with an upset win over Ohio State, Jason. Without question, George. And this day, they have an opportunity against a number two ranked Ohio State team at a 22 and a half point underdog and do something very special that people will remember for the rest of their lives. Ohio State won the toss, they've deferred. The Spartans will receive. Ohio State will defend the North goal to our left. And so the Spartans will put it in play after a touchback at their 25 yard line. Tyler O'Connor with a straight eye behind him. Reverse handoff to R.J. Shelton running right to left. R.J. out over the 35, a quick first down, and he's knocked down at the 36-yard line. First and 10 at their 36. Tyler O'Connor pump fakes, rolls right, throws it back left to L.J. He's at midfield. He's at the 40, the 30, the 20. He's inside the 10. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU! Wow! 64 yards to the house for L.J. Scott from Hubbard, Ohio. It's Michigan State 7, Ohio State nothing. Five wideouts for Barrett on third and long. Elf line over the football. 
The snap to Barrett, looking left. Under he goes down. Down, he goes. Sack back near the 35-yard line. A nine-yard loss. Barrett's now by himself in the shotgun. Rolls to his right. Hit and drop. Sack. Tyler O'Connor under center, deep back, L.J. Scott. Prescott line now lines up, offsetting the eye to the right in front of L.J. L.J., nice Come job with the line of scrimmage. Cuts left and right, on his feet, 30, 35, 40. He's at midfield, angling down the left sideline. Finally tripped up from behind. Heck of a run by L.J. Scott. Holmes to the right of Tyler O'Connor in the shotgun. And around, toss to Donnie Corley. Left to right, Donnie Corley. To the right sideline, got a first down and out of bounds. Wind at his back. 28 yard try from the right hash mark. The snap, the put down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. The Spartans have untied the score. Michael Geiger from 28 yards away. Michigan State 10, Ohio State 7. Ohio State, after the pick, has it first and 10 at the Spartan 37. Snow getting a little heavier here. Barrett play fakes. Under pressure. Hit. And down he goes. The third first half sack for the Spartans. Barrett lines up under center. Samuel starts in motion right. They hand it to Weber. Hit it to line. The ball comes out. The ball 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 is loose. The ball is loose. Michigan State recovers. And the Spartans have it. Michigan State 10, Ohio State 10 at the half. The Spartans heavy underdogs doing battle with the second ranked Buckeyes. And I think if you try to point a finger at who outplayed whom in the first half, it would be the Spartans outplaying the Buckeyes. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. It's Michigan State 10, Ohio State 10 at the half. He's to the right of J.T. Barrett. Hand off to Weber, hit the backfield. He is dropped for a loss by Dylan Alexander. Second down nine, ball to 22. High snap, Damian Terry brings it down, throws it right side, catch made by L.J. Scott. L.J.'s out of the 30. He's got a first down at the 34-yard line. Mark Barger to punt for the sixth time. Oh, it's a short punt. It's a fake. It's a fake. Running to his left at midfield is Chris Fry. And Chris Fry is into Buckeye territory with a first down and change. They're lining up with two tight ends, one wide out and two running backs. The wide out's Donnie Corley, wide side left. Hand off to LJ, running to his right, he's at midfield, breaks a tackle. He's at the 40, and into the far right sideline. He is out of bounds at the 31-yard line of Ohio State. Tyler O'Connor under center, offset eye left. Hand off to LJ, running to his left, he's at the 20, he's at the 15. LJ Scott out of bounds on the near left sideline, offset eye left. Josiah Price starts in motion left to right. And off to LJ, up the middle. He's close he's to the goal line. I think they're going to call him down. just short. That's a first down. Jamal Lyles in motion right to left. And off to LJ, Easy. running left. He's into the end zone. Dragon Buckeyes, touchdown MSU. LJ Scott and the Spartan offensive line punished Ohio State on that drive. The snap. Haller throws into the end zone. Fight for the football. Incomplete intended for Josiah Price. Malik Hooker broke it up. But hey, got to credit Michigan State for trying to go for the win. Very, very hard fought game. Spartans play well enough to win, but fall just short. Ohio State survives here at Spartan Stadium. Second ranked team in the country, coached by Urban Meyer. Does indeed survive in East Lansing. Ohio State 17. 
Michigan State 16. Great football game. Uh, you come up one point short, but it's still a loss, so you got to paint it, paint it the way it is for our players. But uh, I thought we played hard. I thought we did a lot of good things. Um, ran the ball effectively, pretty effectively. But uh, I guess the thing you'd say about this about this football game offensively is is uh, big some big plays, made some big plays, but the consistency fa factor sort of hurts you when you look at. Um, you know, you got to be consistent. You got to score points. Um, the wind was definitely a factor out there today, so it was difficult to throw the football. But um, you know, uh, just the one turnover, I guess. I think. And then de defensively, we hung in, hung in there, and uh, made it difficult. Um, you know, felt like we should go for a two-point conversion. Uh, just wanted to win the football game. So, but very proud of our football team. We've got an opportunity to go to Penn State now. Be another challenge, uh, but we'll be playing for something else again. You know, we'll be playing for, you know, there's obviously high stakes on their end as they move through this. So uh, we'll take it step by step, but uh, proud of our football team. We've come up one short.